the Miami Dolphins are going to have a very different wide receiver room once training camp starts. Yes, a few guys will still be there but several guys, I imagine, will not be. No problem. There are many quality and flat-out superstar receivers out there in free agency. I have no idea what's going to happen with Devontae Parker. Parker is scheduled to make a little more than $6 million this upcoming season. That's not too bad for a starting receiver especially one that's been here his entire career and makes the kind of plays he does. But we all know the deal with Parker, he can never play an entire season let alone 13 games in a season. The guy has paper-thin hamstrings and is constantly dinged. It's hard to say if Mike McDaniel and company will want to keep him or try and trade him for a late round pick. We know Jalen Waddell is a bona fide stud that hasn't come close to scratching the surface of what he can do. Wes Welker came out and has said that he pretty much can't wait to work with Waddell and even Mike McDaniel is advising everyone to draft Waddell in their fantasy leagues next year. That leaves Mac Hollins, who I hope they resign, Lynn Bowden Jr., who will get every opportunity to make the team and makes many folks feel things due to his versatility, Albert Wilson, Preston Williams, and Isaiah Ford. I can very easily see a world where Wilson, Williams, and Ford are shown the door. I wouldn't be shedding many tears for them. Ford is solid but you can find guys to fill his role of knowing the playbook who always comes back to the team even when he's not on the team. So there are going to be a few spots to be filled. We know that the draft is a great place to find talent. I wouldn't be surprised if McDaniel and Greer add a receiver from there. I'd love Jahan Dotson and so would Klump, but I don't think the Dolphins take a receiver with their first round pick. But there's plenty of talent later in the draft. I'm not going to mention the obvious names such as Devontae Adams and Chris Godwin. Obviously, both of those guys can play for my team whenever they'd like. I don't think there is any chance Adams is leaving Green Bay. Godwin is a possibility but I don't think they go in that direction. I could be quite wrong on that. The four receivers I'm going with aren't just known guys but guys I think that would do well in the Mike McDaniel play action type passing game I expect we're going to see. Their financials will differ but you already know that. I'm not going to pontificate how much they'll be making because I have no idea what that will be and I think it's a waste of time to act like I know how much contracts are going to be worth. On to the list. Mike Williams. This isn't the first time I'm mentioning Mike Williams as a possible free agent addition to the Dolphins. I honestly don't think Williams leaves Los Angeles, and he will certainly command a large amount of money, but the Dolphins should certainly see if they can convince the 27-year-old receiver to come to South Beach. Williams would be the ultimate complement to Jalen Waddell and would essentially be a better more durable Devontae Parker. It seemed like every week last year that Williams was catching a bomb from that guy named Herbert. I think Williams would be stellar on the bootlegs where Tua can give him a chance to go up and get it using that big frame of his. Also if the run-pass option is still happening in this Mike McDaniel-themed offense, something I think will still be there in some capacity, then the quick slant is quite important. Williams has the get-off and speed to get inside and again use that big body of his to shield defenders to get to the ball. I love Williams because of his big play potential. Williams had 28 fewer catches than Waddle but had 131 yards more receiving. He has the ability to put up stat lines such as 3 catches for 91 yards and a 64-yard touchdown. It'd be nice to have a guy that can go 50-plus yards on one catch here and there. We know Waddle can do that as well, but having two guys that can do that would be outstanding. Michael Gallup. I know what you're thinking. I laid out why Parker might be traded from the team. I also know visions of Will Fuller are firmly in your brains. So why oh why am I clamoring for a guy who tore his ACL in early January? The reasons are because he shouldn't be as expensive as he would have before the injury and he is an excellent football player. Miami might even be able to get him on a one-year prove-it type deal. I'd be all for that. Gallup has had the luxury of having Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb around him which has led to him having some very productive years. Two years ago, when Lamb wasn't there, he had a 1,000-yard season. When Lamb did get there, Gallup was moved to the third receiver role and he did well with that. I don't think this is an Albert Wilson situation where Gallup is this completely under the radar guy that just needs his opportunity to show what he has. At 25 years old, he's already done that. I think Gallup isn't great at any one thing but he's really good at many things. I think he can be a downfield threat while also being a guy who can gather first downs. He has excellent speed. Yes, I think the injury has a chance of slowing him down a little bit but I think Gallup will adjust. I just think of Gallup and all of these guys paired with Waddle. I feel Waddle is going to command so much attention that a guy like Gallup will have free reign to do whatever he wants underneath and all over the place. Braxton Berrios. No, 
I am not adding Braxton Berrios to this list because Wes Welker is now the receivers coach. I've had my eye on Berrios for a while now. It just so happens that Berrios, one could say, plays a similar type of game as Welker. Pretty sure that's the only comparison you can make with that. Berrios didn't have an eye-popping season with the Jets or anything like that. But I've watched Jets games in the past and I always came away thinking that if they had an accurate quarterback that Braxton Berrios can catch a ton of balls, many for first downs. That's my vision for Berrios. Jalen Waddell tied for sixth in the league for first down catches on third down. I'm not saying that should change or that teams will always be able to stop it. Teams know where the Dolphins want to go on third and short. My point is it'd be very useful to have another guy that navigates the slot position that Tua can rely on to pick up third and shorts. Berrios can do that. He runs a 4.4 so he absolutely can play games with linebackers that pick the short straw and have to cover him in nickel backs who think they can stay in front of him as he fakes them out of their pads. He also adds an element in the return game that should appeal to everybody. We don't want Waddle back there doing it and Berrios has experience doing it. He had a 103-yard return last year. He also has the grit to him that I enjoy. I just ultimately think this guy can catch a lot of balls in the Mike McDaniel high percent themed passing attack I think we're going to see. Alan Lazard. This is a guy that isn't going to be talked about a lot for free agent receivers but he's a guy that I think has a ton of value. He won't cost that much compared to other free agent receivers, but I feel he can be quite productive in our upcoming system. The system I think we'll see is one where crossers are crucial. I think Alan Lazard would do well running crossers where Tua just needs to lay it out in front of him. Lazard only had 513 yards on 40 catches with Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback. But Lazard started to get a ton more looks the last six weeks of the season. Though he only had 40 receptions, Lazard did have eight touchdown. Miami needs more guys who get into the end zone. I don't think I'm breaking any ground with that take. Aaron started to trust him more but surprisingly didn't want to go to him or anyone not named Devontae Adams in the playoff game against the 49ers. If Lazard was utilized more in that game Green Bay probably goes to the NFC title game. Is Lazard going to be a guy that has 1,200 yards and pushes for a Pro Bowl? I don't think so, but is he better than Williams, Wilson, and Ford? Yes, he is. I just think he's consistent. You know what you're getting out of him which to me means you can rely on him as long as you're not asking him to do more than he's capable. Another aspect about Lazard that needs to be said is how good of a blocker he is. Not sure if you watched any highlights of 49 er receivers, but they all block. Fortunately, Lazard thinks highly of how he blocks. He would be a great number 3 guy borderline number 2 if everything went perfect and got better. Bringing in Lazard wouldn't mean that's all that has to happen. Others would, naturally, need to be signed or drafted as well. I think we all realize that. 